Hello, I'm Alistair McLeod and I'm here on behalf of the Gold Money Foundation and with me is Juan Castaneadas. Have I pronounced it correctly? Yes, you did. <laughs> Thank you, Juan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who is a senior lecturer at yeah. UNED University in Madrid yes. and you also have a website, the old lady of threadneedlestreet.com. Yes, exactly. Why, why did you pick that name? Well, because I am a fan and a supporter, if I may say it, of James Gilray's uh, work in the 18th century, I think he's uh, a master of, uh, in, of the caricatures. And, Absolutely, And yes. I think that you can even uh, teach monetary economics uh, just following his uh, drawings and sketches. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the next thing that I'm going to do <laughs> in my right. university, I think so. Um, the thing that's, I mean, we, we live in very interesting times. It's sort yeah. of Chinese interesting, like um, <coughs> it's the sort of interesting you don't really want in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the root of this, it seems to me, is the difference between sound money and weak money. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just wondering what your take is in terms of um, how far we've moved away from sound money and to what extent the problems we have today can be laid at the door of fiat currency. Well, that's a very Big good question. question. Yeah, yes indeed. It is a question that I should have developed in my thesis. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is that I do think that most of the problems we are suffering since 2007 come from uh, the fact that we are living in a 100% fiat currency system. And we don't have an anchor for more to preserve monetary stability. So the difference between a sound money and a weak uh, money system, in my view, the basic one is that under the sound money system, uh, there is a rule that we are giving to the central bank to preserve the purchasing power of the money. This rule can be put in terms of the gold, silver, or uh, gold and silver together, because under that system, the gold standard system, the central bank could not over-issue means of payments in the economy, because at the end of the day, they, they had the obligation to redeem all the paper notes um, people wanted to give to them, and uh, in exchange, they had to, to give to the people the gold and the silver required. So people with gold and silver would actually be confident that uh, the money is not being debased. Because, Absolutely. Because it is, it effectively, the, the, a complete standard takes it out of the hands of government. Exactly. Well, not completely, because during the classical gold standard years, uh, the government fixed the price of the, of the, of the gold in, in terms of the currency. And following, you know, the Milton Friedman's uh, a classical critic to the to the classical gold standard. Uh, if you are a supporter of the free market economy, you don't want anybody to fix any price. But obviously, even though taking into account this uh, flaw of the classical gold standard, at least the government couldn't uh, take uh, a monetary policy in its hands to do whatever they they wanted to do to finance recurrent deficits. For example, as we have seen in the last. Uh, 50 years now that the gold standard has been uh, totally abolished. Indeed, and um, it's, it's allowed uh, governments to finance themselves purely by expanding either money or, or the quantity of credit in the economy. Yeah. And um, that really, I think, is what's going on with QE in yeah. the UK at the moment. Hmm. Um, we've had two rounds in the United States, but there's still an open checkbook there, isn't there, really? Yeah, I think that the problem is much bigger in the case of the US because of, of the quantity of, and the quality of the key e expansionary measures. In particular, if you take a look at the last figures of the M M M4 growth or M2 growth in the case of the US uh, and the growth of the base money, it is huge. I think that the money supply in the broad sense is growing at uh, Roughly ten percent. Yes. Well, I, annually. Uh, absolutely. And um, I, I recently uh, produced a chart yeah. on true money supply or Austrian money supply, yeah. and I think it was growing at something like uh, fourteen, fifteen percent. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And base money is, is increasing even more, by like yes. twenty percent or something like that. So this is a symptom that the the central bank is issuing a lot of money, is pumping money into the economy mechanically. You know, like uh, here you are. This is. This is the way we have chosen to, to exit the crisis. It is, it is a very bad way. It's really the destruction of money, it seems to me, that's going on. Because as long as you have um, interest rates at zero to a quarter percent, and you have an inflation rate running, if you believe the CPI figures, at 4%, if you go to shadowstats.com, you're looking at 
10 percent or whatever yeah. figure it is, um, then every day that passes you are destroying capital, you're destroying savings. And it seems to me it's a funny way to go about things. I mean, where's the recovery going to come so long as you continue to destroy savings? Well, that's a very good question because um, this is not the way to, to exit uh, the crisis. I, I totally agree with your point because with this um, way to exit the crisis, we are just, we are just uh, delaying the, struct the, the adjustment of the economy. Because first we need the economy to adjust to the new situation. We are not going to grow anymore based on cheap credit. That's what I think. This is not the proper way to, to foster uh, credibility and to foster economic growth in the future. So what the Fed is doing is just to finance the deficit the, the, the government, the federal government is, is, is uh, running in the last years. It's the unstated objective, isn't it, really? Yeah. What they're doing is not so much, well, it's partly, I suppose, keeping the banking system from, yeah. balance sheets from imploding, but it's, it's also uh, financing the government deficit. And yeah. one wonders what level interest rates would be mm. if, um, if there was no um, printing money purely for that purpose. Well, yeah, yeah. yes, because the Federal, uh, the, the Federal Reserve is not only supporting the banks, as you said, as the lender of last resort of the economy, they didn't want to go through the same experience as in the, in the 30s, uh, where uh, the, I think that the money, money growth in broad terms uh, declined or f fell by 30% uh, Yes, in it three was years. particularly bank credit contracted. Uh, exactly, yes, exactly. Yes. They, didn't want to, they didn't want to repeat that uh, mistake. Well, I agree with that. But they go even, even farther. And they are uh, giving the money to the to the treasury just to exp to spend to, to pump public money into the economy. This is the bad way to do it. So they have the privilege that they have one nation, one treasury, and one central bank supporting the whole plan of the government. So I think this is a mistaken way to to uh, to go through this uh, to to try to overcome the, this crisis. And they are going to 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 suffer the consequences. I think in the in the in the near future. Well, it, it, surely it raises the question that um, this continuing destruction of capital, yeah. um, if it was carried to the logical conclusion, it leads to the destruction of the currency itself. Um, and the problem I have, and please give me confidence that I'm wrong on this, is that I find it very hard to see that once you embark on that road, how you stop it, how you suddenly decide, right, we're going to stop printing. Because if you do that, um, then, you know, debts become r real um, mm. and uh, so you get bankruptcies. You get, you get the correction in the economy which may well indeed be needed um, and under Austrian theory it's, it's, it is actually essential that it happens. It's going to happen and the more you defer it, the worse it is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but notwithstanding that, to take the political decision to bankrupt many businesses is the way they would see it, by withdrawing um, the extra money from circulation is a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, I think that... How do we get away from it? That's really But, but it question. is going to be even worse if they don't stop it now, <laughs> if they go on with this policy. It just gets worse and worse, Yeah, worse it? and worse with, the, with yeah. the years and with the months. So the thing is that uh, they are indeed destroying the savings in the, in the economy, the capital, uh, following the Austrian perspective of economic cycle. I agree with you that they are taking the wrong way uh, they should uh, correct the, the more investments uh, the, the economy made in the last expansion. I totally agree with you. But it, it is so difficult for politicians, uh, for the Treasury and for the President of the United States to tell the Federal, the Federal Reserve to stop printing money, to stop supporting the economy. It would be, you know, like losing the, the elections in next year. Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other way, uh, sorry, sorry, on the other side, uh, I totally agree with you that at some point, I think that they trust that with uh, pumping money into the economy, they are going to make the economy grow at some point. So then, as, as I told you, they trust that if they achieve this goal, uh, they can, you know, more or less uh, come to a conventional monetary policy once the economy is growing. That's their belief. Well, that's an interesting one because um, I when I look at GDP, which is the way everybody says, you know, that's the measure of the way the economy yeah, goes. That's the conventional way. Um, it's the conventional way, but the more I look at GDP, the more convinced I am that it's actually a money quantity which has no relation at all to the underlying productivity and production in, um, in an economy. 
And um, uh, so what that suggests is that if they push enough money into the economy in the form of money printing and so on and so forth, then the GDP statistic will recover. So we will get the appearance of economic recovery while at the mm. same time we know if we look at hard statistics such as uh, unemployment uh, that um, actually <laughs> we're in a depression. Well, yeah, here uh, I think that there may be a um, relation in the medium term between money growth and uh, nominal income in the economy. I think this is pretty clear according to the statistical evidence. This is the point uh, uh, Friedman made in his last year, well, in, his, in all his career. But I agree that in the short term now, the money that the Fed is printing uh, may have an impact in, nominal, in the nominal income in the US economy, but in the, in the inflation side of the, of the nominal income and not in the real side, I agree with you. So they are going to have a problem. As I said before, I don't trust their trust on the mm. effectiveness of this policy. So they should maybe not now, because for political reasons they are not in the correct phase to do it, but at some point they have to stop printing so much money. Because they are not only supporting the banks, as we talked uh, before, they are doing much more than that. I think they are pursuing a political, an economic political um, uh, goal, which is the one that is, has been set by the federal government. So, having destroyed so much in the way of savings, um, the US government after the election has to cut the budget deficit back to Oof. where? I mean, well, I, you know, because it's got to fund it, hasn't it? Yeah. And it's also got to roll over the existing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's against a background of banks who are now in a totally different mode from the uh, banking crisis back in 2007 8. You know, before then, they were prepared to expand their balance sheets. You know, they would, they would um, give away money to get business. Now, of course, they're totally different. They take every opportunity to reduce their exposure because they're overgeared and they understand that and they don't want to have to go into the Fed's window every, you know, yeah, at every yeah. opportunity. So um, with the banks trying to contract the balance sheets um, and government spending having to be cut hard, it's quite difficult to see how this is going to, going to work in practice. Um, and I, I mean, it, you made the point that um, uh, you know, perhaps if there is a, a pickup in GDP, it's going to be at the price level, I think, rather than actual production level. Um, I would agree with that entirely. But doesn't this suggest that interest rates are going to have to go up sooner rather than later? Uh, certainly a lot sooner than the Fed um, has said that they will keep it um, at current rates until, I think, the middle of 2013. I mean, isn't the story for next year going to be perhaps interest rates start going up? Well. Yes, let me, let me answer to your question, but before, let me say that I do agree that interest rates, the basic interest rates, the, the, uh, must be lower enough to finance banks with liquidity pro uh, problems in the short run. That's the traditional bait shot uh, uh, policy to, to preserve the banking system for, from collapsing. That's totally correct. But as we have been talking before, I think that the Fed is going farther much farther than that. So at some point, and I th it think it should be sooner rather than later, the, the Fed must correct uh, its monetary policy in the terms you, you suggested in your, in your question. They must set clearly uh, a primary mandate in terms of price stability. So first, they should um, correct the mistakes of the dual mandate, the so-called dual mandate problem they have in the Constitution of the, uh, in the Act of the Federal Reserve. And once this mandate is clear, which must have the approval of the, of the government, they must keep, uh, you know, very rigorously uh, to maintain the purchasing power of money. At the same time, this is very hard to do, but at the same time, the government must um, achieve, uh, a, you know, a very rigorous program to cut spending. Because you cannot contract monetary supply, not contract monetary supply, but you cannot stop printing so much money without the government from doing the same with public spending. So this is a very tough job, but I think that next year they should do, they start to do that. Well, whether we, they do or not, we wait with bated breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, well, I, I couldn't guess. I, I, I don't know if they are going to do that. I, well, we, we, don't, we don't know at this no. stage. Um, I must admit, I'm, a, I'm quite pessimistic about yeah. their ability to escape 
um, because the, of chains of it, the chains of inflation, really. Yeah. Um, because once you start relying on, on fiat money, extra fiat money, to keep mm. the system going, whether it's the banks or whether it's the government, or whatever, I don't think is that material. It just seems to me that um, history shows that once a government really starts surviving by printing money, it's very difficult for them to get away from that. But um, moving back to Europe, uh, Europe, I think the big difference, as I see it, with Europe is that you've got an ECB who's, whose mandate is essentially to run a sounder yeah. money, monetary policy yeah. than, than that of the Fed. Yeah. And they are now under great pressure from everyone except Germany and yes. perhaps Finland. <laughs> yeah, Holland maybe. <laughs> and Holland, Holland maybe, yes. Yeah. Um, who's, um, they're under great, great pressure to, to, um, to print because that's the only salvation anyone sees. Um, what's your take on it? How do you think that's going to evolve? Well, again, I, I must distinguish between two different scenarios, the short run and the medium to long term scenario. In the short run, I think that, the, um, and I must say that uh, I'm not in the um, mainstream of the market analyst in this regard. Um, I think that the ECB must support the growth, the uh, stable and sustained growth of uh, M3 in the Eurozone. This may require that uh, these extraordinary expansionary measures may maintain for a while. But what is most important to me, the ECB must change its rule, its monetary rule, in order not to repeat in the future, in the next expansion, hopefully in the next two years' time, maybe, the same errors they have made in the, in the past. What I mean is that in the past we were told that we were living under price stability but price stability in terms of CPI, Consumer Price Index. And we didn't pay enough attention to the asset prices, financial asset prices, and real prices, real estate. It's the old thing about that it was the credit, it was a credit fuel yes. boom, wasn't it? In, exactly. In, in particularly in Spain, exactly. Italy, Greece, and so on and so forth. Exactly, and they thought that, you know, monetary expansion was not so important. Obviously, they didn't say this in their report, in their official statements. But as far as I remember, when I was studying this situation before the crisis. And every time I ask any member of the parliament, of the European parliament, of any member of the European Central Bank about the extraordinary growth of uh, M3, the monetary supply, broad money supply in, in the Eurozone, they said, that, okay, there must be problems with, accountability, with the um, statistics, there must be changes, structural changes between M2, M3 and M1, okay, technicalities. But at the yeah. end of the day, they didn't pay enough attention to the excessive money growth. And in my view, they should, have, they should pay more attention in the future to the consequences of excessive money growth on prices, but not only consumer prices, but on the whole uh, uh, prices of the economy. On the whole thing, exactly. Yeah. It seems to I me, mean, it's interesting you bring that up because it seems to me they've made exactly the same mistake as um, the Peel Act, Banking yeah. Act of uh, exactly. 1844, which. Yeah which recognised um, the uh, value of, of, of real money and the notes that are issued um, on the back of that that, 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 that the gold and silver had to be there, but didn't recognise the effect of expanding credit in, in banks and the way that, ba that credit can be manufactured out of thin air. Yeah, the thing is that, you know, uh, many people think, still think, politicians, and not only politicians, still economists, I must say, that they think that just uh, um, printing money you create jobs. I know it sounds silly. It's but a myth. It's a myth. Yes. But many people defend and support this myth in, uh, you know, in the interviews and in the in the parliaments. Oh, it's 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 for for most people it's a given, isn't it? They assume yeah. that this is true. Yeah, it is something that you know many people claim that the ECB should be more expansionary. Yeah. And I say, how how come? <laughs> how can they be more expansionary, with the interest rates around one percent? Uh, extraordinary lending facilities to the banking system. This is extraordinary in, in historical perspective. So this is expansive. It is, and um, the, the, the ridiculous thing about it is that um, the only way in which you can really create uh, economic growth is by um, having savings as a healthy mix, if you yeah. like, in the consum you know, sort of consumption yeah. and savings. Um, and on the one hand, we've got interest rates which are so low that are destro they're destroying savings. Actually, to get the economy recovering, you need higher interest rates to encourage people to save so that you get the capital investment, and that way you will get something which is more long-lasting. 
but it can only be determined by the market. It can't be determined by central banks, because it seems to me that a policy committee, a monetary policy committee, uh, comp comprised of people who have very little business experience, in many cases none, they're yeah. entirely theoretical, yeah. <laughs> isn't actually not the best way about Academic going about best. it. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. Well, well the picture that you, you, you're drawing is, 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 is exactly the one that I have in my mind. It's very much pessimistic because I don't think they are going to uh, raise interest rates in the short run in order to keep savings uh, recovered a little bit, so that's uh, investment is recovering and so on and so forth, you know. As I said before, I think that the ECB must um, sustain money growth, a stable money growth, in order to recover nominal income in Europe. In Europe, that's what I think, really. And afterwards, just afterwards, uh, it could be a question of months, a question of, uh, I don't know, qu several quarters, two or three quarters. Afterwards, the ECB must uh, resume a conventional a more sound and sustainable monetary policy. So yes, they should uh, increase interest rates in the near future, in three, four quarters ahead. Because this is the only way to achieve uh, price stability, and price stability is a precondition for monetary growth, sorry, for economic growth. One of the key points behind what you're saying is that money is actually a product of the market, not yeah. the government. Yeah, it should be. Yes. Well, it it, I, absolutely it should yeah, be. I know yeah, yeah, sorry, but it's not. it should be, yes, because at least there is some competition uh, between the issuers of bank money, but you know, this is a very restricted competition because at the end of the day they have to be licensed by the state and they have to issue their bank money in terms of the, of the money of the central bank. So this is a very imperfect system, Absolutely. I may say. So this is not well, the best way to, to achieve uh, some money mm -hmm. uh, policy, I'm afraid. I'm afraid we're going to have to live with the system for the moment. Uh, yeah. It's been fascinating talking to you about um, central banks, their role in money creation and so on. And um, let's hope our worst uh, <laughs> fears aren't realised. Juan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.